The case of Kyle Rittenhouse has been blown out of proportion and distorted ever since it first started. The um, inflammatory advocacy group Color of Change described the case of Kyle Rittenhouse in terms that suggested that Kyle Rittenhouse is, if not himself, a white supremacist or nationalist, being supported by white nationalists because of the um, PayPal, sorry, the um, funding campaign run by the Fight Back Foundation. Um, now, normally these groups, but yet, I'm sorry, I should, I should clarify that further, in the same email, they declared Kyle Rittenhouse to be a white nationalist. Now, I haven't seen any evidence that Kyle Rittenhouse is a white nationalist. I've seen that he helps out with uh, giving, uh, med uh, giving medical treatment to people on the street, even though he's not an EMT, and he did lie to uh, people who asked him if he was a certified e EMT, and he lied about his age. He said he was 19 when he was 17. And I've also seen that he's done volunteer work at other places. He was a lifeguard. He helped out at a fire station. He took uh, some kind of a course um, uh, involving police training, although it wasn't to become a police officer, apparently, at, at that point. Um, I haven't really seen any proof that he's a white supremacist. Is he a kid who made stupid decisions? Absolutely. Um, should he have been there in Kenosha that night? Uh, carrying his gun? Absolutely not. The police should have checked his ID and pulled him away, but they had so many people to deal with. They looked at these people who were protecting property as people who were ex exercising the right, and they made the misjudgment of trusting that the people who said they were adults were adults, and that was their mistake. That's on the police. <clears throat> All right, so I took a quick look at the Fight Back uh, Foundation, and this seems to be a right-wing group and they say, we fight back for forgotten America. We stand ready to protect and defend the constitutional rights, livelihoods, and property of people and businesses that are being targeted and destroyed. We are prepared to fight back and confront big tech executives who have abused federal lawsuit protections by censoring truthful speech. They also say that they're in support of President Trump, that the Russian, Russia cons uh, angle and the uh, uh, presidential campaigns was a lie, um, and that they're they're the only things that they're that they're afraid of is God, and um, you know that the the, le the left um, sometimes they say radical left, sometimes they don't are a bunch of evil liars and who are unaccountable and, and stuff, and uh, so you know they really have very clearly positioned themselves. There's nothing in here that I can see um, that in implies or states that they are white supremacists or white nationalists. They speak about um, the fight for freedom uh, for all Americans. Um, and they kneel for God, stand up for the American flag and the principles it, re it represents for all. So, you know, what it's a Texas organization. So, you know, you could say, oh my gosh, they're from Texas. They've got to be white supremacists. I don't know. There's just not enough information here and I don't know. Um, really have the knowledge to research this organization to find out what it really is all about. So let's get back to the fact that Kyle Rittenhouse was, um, okay, let's, let's recap very briefly. For those of you who didn't take the time to do what I did, which was to actually research the events um, shortly after they happened in Kenosha. So, um, and I really feel that what happened to Jacob Blake and George Floyd should be the, po um, the point here and not the situation with um, Kyle. And certainly not trying to paint him as a white supremacist. Um, because they're really, it's, it's, it's really a, a false argument designed to try to incite anger among black people. And when the, um, the verdict came out yesterday, I, was, I actually happened to be sitting down helping a, a nice uh, lady who happened to be black. Um, and she was very incensed when she discovered that he got off on all charges. And, um, she went, and I explained to her what had happened with Gage. She didn't know that, and she was very surprised, and her attitude kind of changed at that point. Um, although I think she was still ultimately convinced that it was a bad thing. 
that Kyle had gotten off on all charges. But I want to, if I remember, I'm going to address that uh, in a minute here. But, um, so, not long after Jacob Blake was shot repeatedly in the back by a police officer because Jacob Blake would not stop, um, had supp was supposedly armed with a knife or had a knife in his car, and he would not stop walking around. Um, as I understand, understood it at the time, Jacob Blake was... Um, using a car and had his children in the car and the car had been he had stolen the car or something like that and uh, there was um he had been bothering his his ex um even though i think there was a restraining order um i don't remember all the details but he was repeatedly told to, to drop the weapon and to not move anymore and he ignored them and when he went into the car i don't know why but the police officer who was behind him, shot him repeatedly, and partially, um, well, basically he became a, a paraplegic um, as a result. <clears throat> I think that's where people should be focusing their attention, both on the criminal activities of Jacob Blake that day, and also on the um, excessive force used by the police officer at that time um, to deal with somebody who had a knife um, and was halfway in a vehicle with his butt sticking out. So... He didn't need to shoot, and I. But that's my opinion. I haven't researched that that case enough because, and and yeah. So Kyle um, had heard about the situation in Kenosha where they were rioting because of Jacob Blake's shooting, and um, there was a particular uh, used car dealership that had been uh, burned, basically burned to a crisp by the mob. Um, for what reason, I don't know. And so Kyle went up to K Kenosha to visit family in, in, um, in Kenosha, and his, um, I believe it was his sister's fiancé who was in possession of his gun and had, without Kyle's knowledge, purchased full metal jacket bullets for the AR-15, um, which is a, I think a... Uh, 22 caliber gun. AI and full metal jacket bullets apparently are designed to penetrate. So these are more dangerous than the blunt nose uh, bullets you might typically see in a 22 gun. Um, they're more, I guess, military, I might, you might suggest. Um, so, anyways, um, <clears throat> a friend of his future brother in law had contacted him and said, hey, we're going to be protecting some of the two of the other uh, lots of the car dealer um, whose lot was burned yesterday. Would you like to come? And this guy, whose name I think was Blake, invited Kyle, uh, even though Kyle was a minor who was not allowed to uh, carry a gun in that sort of a situation, as far as I can understand. Um, Kyle wanted to be there to help protect the uh, pe the property. He also wanted, had his medical bag because he wanted to render assistance to people who were injured, and he did render assistance to people who were injured. <clears throat> so, um, during the course of the night, there were a lot of uh, very heated people, uh, understandably, because of what happened to Jacob Blake. Um, people had been really riled up by inflammatory um, statements made by the governor and lieutenant governor of Wisconsin, as well as various advocacy groups and rogue uh, elements who were trying to stir up trouble. Um, and in fact, the governor and the lieutenant governor, in my opinion, uh, based on what I saw of their statements about the shooting of, um, shooting of Jacob Blake um, and Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, probably were taking advantage of the situation to Try to get garner more more support uh, politically speaking. Um, so there was a point apparently at which um, one of the victims of Kyle, uh, a guy named uh, Joseph Rosenbaum, who I believe is a felon, um, and um, this there are videos showing Joseph antagonizing uh, people um, who he felt opposed to at the protests and trying to start fights with them. Um, he apparently at one point also threatened Kyle and his group, although not necessarily specifically Kyle, and uh, was threatening murder. Um, so this guy, in Kyle's mind, was um, apparently, he looked very dangerous. And, you know, 
think about this. You give a 17-year-old who hasn't got training really to deal with a situation like a, a mob where it can be very volatile, um, and you give him a gun that's loaded with dangerous bullets, even if it's just a 22, and you put him in this situation and you expect him to behave okay, it's just a recipe for disaster. And disaster is exactly what happened. So um, at one point, uh, Kyle, he left the property that they were protecting and he, um, he and another um, person who was protecting that property they left together to look and see if there was anybody that needed medical aid. And during their uh, excursion, they got separated. Uh, Kyle and he were supposed to be to meet back at this gas station that was quite nearby. But although Kyle ran past the gas station, he did not see uh, the other man standing there. And so he continued to go off and he couldn't get back to the place where they'd come from because the police wouldn't let him go back in that direction. And he, and so things kind of, he made some bad decisions um, as far as what he should do, but also it was partially out of his control. Um, and as a 17 year old, I'm really not surprised that he screwed up as badly as he did. Kyle uh, was confronted by Joseph and another man, and apparently this other man, whose name I forget, uh, told um, Rosenbaum to chase and kill Kyle. So Kyle took off running. Joseph ran after him. At one point, <coughs> Joseph, who had been carrying a, a plastic bag with something light in it, for some whatever stupid reason, threw the bag at Kyle. Um, Kyle ended up running onto uh, one of the dealership lots, uh, but I'm not sure if it's the same uh, owner or if it was a different owner, and he stopped and turned around because in front of him was a crowd of people on the, on the other end of the, of the lot. And so he turns, and as he turns, uh, Joseph Rosenbaum uh, approaches him with, uh, with menacing intent, and Kyle freaked out and shot him repeatedly, and Joseph died shortly thereafter. Uh, Kyle initially stopped, to help the reporter who had been trailing Kyle um, with his permission um, and whom he videotaped Kyle li uh, lying about him, his position as an EMT and his age. Um, but the, the reporter, upon seeing Joseph had been shot by Kyle, he immediately tried to render aid to uh, Joseph and Kyle stopped to try and help. But then he saw that the uh, crowd seemed to be ups angry and he fled the scene going back in the direction he'd come from. Um, some people did start to give chase, and uh, he did sh briefly talk to one of the other people that had been uh, working on protecting the properties of the car dealership owner, um, but then he ran off, um, and so he was chased by uh, a few other guys, and one of them was um, Anthony Huber, and um, Anthony Huber... Um, was okay so Kyle fell down um, an unidentified man I think they've never figured out who he was he actually kicked uh, Kyle in the face and then Anthony Huber came and hit him with his skateboard and then grabbed the barrel of Kyle's gun so when Anthony um, who uh, uh, grabbed his gun Kyle uh, thought he was going to have the gun removed from him and uh, be shot with it, so he shot Anthony, uh, and Anthony stumbled off and fell to the ground and died shortly thereafter. After, immediately following Anthony falling over onto the ground, uh, off to the side, another man who had been following uh, Kyle, whose name was Gage uh, Grosskreutz, I believe is the correct way to say it, um, he stepped, moved forward towards Kyle with a pistol in his hand. I think he had a Glock or something like that. And as soon as Kyle saw him approaching with a pistol in his hand, he held up his AR-15 at him, pointing it at him, and Gage immediately raised up his hands, and you can see the pistol in the one hand, and backed away a step or two. As soon as Kyle lowered the barrel of his rifle, Gage again started approaching Kyle and was pointing his pistol at Kyle, at which point Kyle shot him in the arm same arm that was holding the gun. Gage 
at that point, he gave up whatever it was he was planning to do. I don't know if he was hoping to disarm Kyle, or if he was going to shoot Kyle, but he lost a chunk of his bicep, and um, he retreated. Um, Kyle, at that point, had already, prior to Anthony Huber tr hitting him with a skateboard, the first man who tried to hurt him, Kyle had tried to shoot, but had failed to. So there was an attempted shooting, there were two murders, and then there was the wounding of Gage Grosskreutz. Um, so that's, that's what actually happened. Immediately following that, Kyle went to the police line near a gas station. He attempted to surrender himself to the police, and a police officer who was in a vehicle whom he approached said, get back or I'll pepper spray you. And so Kyle was saying, was, you, and you can hear it in the video, Kyle was saying that I've shot somebody. Um, but then the police did not respond to him. They said, just go home. Um, so Kyle left. He went back to uh, Illinois. And I think he did, I don't remember if he took the rifle with him, but the, the rifle was probably left in Wisconsin. But... Um, so though, for those who don't know, the Kyle, Kyle had wanted the gun and had chosen it, it for uh, basically for target practice and stuff, and he was kind of enamored of the gun. And since he was too young to own it, he had given the money to his future brother-in-law to purchase, and it was being stored at, at that person's house, I believe, in uh, at one point in one part of the house, and then later because of the rise in a different part of the house. Um, and so it wasn't in Kyle's possession. He didn't bring it up from Illinois, um, and, and he didn't have it until it was given to him by by Blake. Um, following, eventually, pa uh, Kyle was taken into custody um, in, I believe, in Illinois and remanded to Kenosha. And um, he recently stood trial and was acquitted on all charges. Now, I watched bits and pieces of the court proceedings. And what I could see was that the prosecution made a lot. Um, I think that they made some very serious tactical errors. I think, number one, that if they had hoped for any kind of a conviction, they should have charged him on something other than what they charged him on. Um, and number two, um, the prosecution, uh, the, main, the main trial lawyer, was very arrogant. Um, he had submitted some kind of a motion to the judge, and the judge had... Um, the judge had denied the motion to him, and so the the apparently the, the lawyer didn't appreciate that. So he tried to be very sneaky and ignore the full implications of the denial, and tried to submit the stuff that he had been denied, and the judge just shut him down. And the judge was rather angry at him, um, and he briefly lost his composure multiple times during the cross examination by the prosecution's lawyer. Um, but, but, and the, the, the honestly, uh, the, the guy has balls because he continued to argue with the judge for a while before finally giving up. Um, but you know, it, it's just in watching it and a lot of people commented on what an, what an ass the trial lawyer was. Um, and you know, the, the uh, defense attorney was very pissed off and he tried to get a mistrial and that didn't work. It went through, and I think that the judge was wise not to declare a mistrial. I think that would have made the situation a lot worse than it really was, because a lot of people in the black community have been misled into believing that Kyle's a white supremacist, even though the Kyle shot white people, not black people. Um, and although the man who who kicked him in the face was, I believe, a black person, so it's probably a good thing he managed to miss him. Um, so, should Kyle have been... Uh, charged with something. Yeah, I, I believe he should have. Number one, he lied, um, and it's on tape, or not tape, it's been, it was recorded. He lied about his his certification as an EMT, which he did not have. He lied about his age to uh, at least the reporter, if not the police, um, and other people that he spoke to. Um, so, you know, there was ample evidence that there was some wrongdoing on Kyle's part, although I think it was more um, because of his desire to help than because, uh, or maybe he felt kind of a, a sense of bravado and excitement and was like, you know, I, I'm just going to lie because, you know, I really want to be here and help and, and what, or whatever. Uh, maybe he got a kick out of it. I don't know. Um, but 
ultimately, if we, and I looked at a lot of different videos of the events surrounding the deaths of uh, Joseph and Anthony and the shooting of Gage, and I saw different angles that were presented in the courtroom uh, for some of that stuff. And I wanted to be very careful before I passed judgment on things based on that. And again, based on what I could see, we had a 17-year-old who was armed with a dangerous weapon and should not have been there at all. Um, that was some a bad judgment call on the part of his future brother-in-law. And he sh certainly shouldn't have, if he had gone in, he shouldn't have been lying about his age to anybody. He shouldn't have been carrying a weapon. He should have just had his medic bag, and that was it. Um, he shouldn't have left the property that he was protecting, Um and the adults that were there should have been supervising him to keep him safe and make sure he didn't do anything stupid, which unfortunately did not happen because I'm probably sure that some of them were being equally stupid even though they didn't kill any or shoot anybody. Um, further, uh, again, I think that the prosecution erred in the charges that they brought against Kyle and the uh, behavior of the, the trial lawyer in the case was just really kind of did not endear him to anybody. And I'm not at all surprised that he got off on all charges. Um, if they had maybe chosen different charges, maybe he would have gotten charged for at least something. Um, do I believe that um, this is a, a um, an NRA guns rights issue uh, case? Um, in a way, you can argue that it is. It's the right to defend yourself with a weapon. Um, is it something that Kyle should side with? I absolutely think that Kyle should stay out of the guns, no guns uh, debate. I don't think he should take a position within that because I think it's just going to alienate people who could be his allies. Um, and it also, um, I don't think he's well enough informed to be able to make a uh, good decision. He is only 17, I'm sorry, he's 18 now. He's only a kid. I'm sorry. Until you're 25, 26, you're, you're, in my book, you're not an adult. Um, finally, um, to the black community, I, I understand your concern about what happened, but just because it happened during a protest involving people who were protesting about Jacob Blake doesn't mean it had something to do with Jacob Blake or the black community itself. I don't think... There was any, there's any question at all that what he did, he did out of self-defense, even though he was mistaken and shouldn't have shot. Um, he, he probably would have gotten the crap beat out of him, but those other people would probably be alive. But it didn't have anything to do with the black community. It was a, a series of bad judgment by him and his friends and family and the police and other people, and those people shouldn't have been chasing him. Uh, you know, Joseph and, and uh, Anthony were, you know, both had criminal records. Um, and But to, to t try it and tie this with white supremacy or to claim that Kyle is a white supremacist, I really, I don't see it. And I really think that, um, I, I suggest that the black community take a very careful look at all the documentation you can find about it. And I think that if you do, you will agree with me. Um, simply because... You know, we're not talking about police brutality. We're not talking about a white person shooting a black person. We're talking about white people attacking white people and dying for because they attacked a scared kid who was armed with a dangerous weapon. I mean, what do you expect? Uh, so, I, I, I really would like to say this. I am seeing a lot of things happening where the black community is being whipped into your, to a furor by the media and by rogue uh, groups and by incendiary advocacy groups like Color of Change. I think, based on what I've seen from the Color of Change, they are deliberately trying to stir the pot. They are deliberately trying to anger people. I have seen email from them where they have lied and distorted the facts. Um, and I don't think that you should automatically trust what you're hearing. I think you should do what I did and do your own research and find out what really happened. 
and um, as long as you know there's enough vid video and audio um, to see you know before during and after you should be able to come to a proper conclusion um, and if you don't there are a lot of commentators out there who um, even black people who commented similarly to myself in regards to Kyle's case so be very careful out there folks because there are groups out there that really really want to keep you divided from the, re the rest of us they they want to keep you angry they want to keep you off kilter they want to manipulate you and they are they're manipulating you they're manipulating you for money they're manipulating you for votes they're manipulating you for power and you really need to be careful because they don't care about you they care about what they're going to get out of it by taking advantage of your emotions and your lack of understanding of what's really happening in a situation um and i could name cases where color of change has deliberately lied about it but that's beyond the scope of this video you can watch some of my other videos uh, and read some of my articles on these cases if you want to find out more thank you very much for watching and i hope you have a great day i want i wanted to add some things to um what i said before about the rittenhouse case um i see people that are using kyle as a kind of like um, I guess you could say as a, um, poster boy for, um, you know, white privilege. And while I agree that there's white privilege, I really don't think that it's, um, appropriate in this particular case to take, use Kyle as an example. Okay, first of all, we've got lots of cases where... Uh, a white person walked away from a crime against a black person. We've got lots of cases with black people um, who have been persecuted um, even though they may not have done what they were supposed to have done. Um, so why not take one of those cases, any case where a white person has gotten away from, uh, gotten away with something that um, clearly they shouldn't have now did kyle get away with something yes however the prosecution screwed it up and i want to explain what i mean by that um so if you look at the charges that the prosecution made against kyle and then how the prosecutor behaved in the courtroom uh, like he was ignoring what the judge had uh, said or what he had dismissed and trying to get it reinserted into the um, case and arguing. Um, so, but let's look at the, the five charges. Number one, first degree reckless homicide of Joseph Rosenbaum. So, second, second count was first degree recklessly endangering safety first uh, and the third one also was the same uh the second one was for richard mcginnis and the third one was the unknown male who attacked kyle and kicked him in the head um count four was the first degree intentional homicide of anthony huber and count five was the attempted first degree intentional ho homicide of gage grosskreutz so if we if we look at these things um there are some <sighs> problems with these charges and then there's the aggravating factor, which I think absolutely was appropriate. Uh, use of a dangerous weapon, which is applicable to all five counts. Okay, so, you know, there's, you can't argue that he used a dangerous weapon. So, that's what it is. But if we look at the situation, and I did, as I already explained, I did look carefully at the situation from multiple viewpoints. And what I see here is a, a scared kid who has committed uh, murder in, uh, because he was so scared that he felt he had to, to harm or kill somebody else in order to save his own life. Was he really in danger of death? I don't know. I don't know what was... You know, Joe and, and, and Tony were both uh, um, criminals of some kind or other. Um, and Joe, during that evening, had been seen uh, trying to incite other people to fight. And just being really inflammatory. Um, and then... Um, they did go after him. I mean... Sure. It, it just... Uh, 
I'm sorry. Um, I want to point out one more thing here. In the instructions to the jury, Judge Schroeder gave them, reminded them that they had the option to select a lesser charge for any of the five charges um, that were used in the complaint. They would, but they would, of course, have to have um, find the, the defendant guilty of second degree intentional homicide or first degree reckless homicide instead. So there was an option given to them, and I don't know. But when I look at these charges, so let's take a, a look at count number one, okay? And I want you to keep in mind um, how the brain works when you're really scared and how you, even just playing a video game, your brain goes haywire if you're not stone cold calm through the whole game. You can, you, can, you can trigger the same reaction that you trigger in real life. You make mistakes. You get stressed. You, know, you get forgetful. You lose focus. You lose creativity and so on and so forth. And that is often what happens with people who are terrified. I mean, it may seem trite when you watch a horror movie or um, a slasher movie, but the truth is, is that people get so scared that they just do the stupidest things when being chased by a killer who they could have even easily gotten away from sometimes. So count number one, there was no way that the prosecution was going to be able to prove utter disregard for Joe's life. Okay. They could have used a lesser charge, okay? Um, was it necessary for Kyle to fire at Joe five times? Uh, or sorry, four? Four times, yeah. And did he have to shoot at the torso? No and no. But I doubt he was in control of himself. I believe his amygdala had been triggered to the point where he was at least partially hijacked. Um, and if you don't know what that means, um, you need to learn about the amygdala. Uh, count number two in regards to uh, Miss, uh, Tony, um, the reckless charge, it, part of the charge it made it impossible to get a guilty on that. Um, sorry, not Joseph, uh, not Tony, um, for Richard McGinnis. Sorry about that. I wasn't even aware that Richard had been in a line of shot. Richard was pretty foolish for following directly behind, but he probably didn't anticipate that this scared jackrabbit of a kid was going to start firing so was was Kyle um, was Kyle reckless um, uh, yeah but I don't I don't you know I, I don't really know that he was even aware of Richard being behind uh, Joseph um and he certainly didn't have any intention of shooting the very reporter that he had invited to go along with him. Um, and then the guy that he shot at that he missed, uh, I believe he shot at him twice after he kicked him in the head, was that reckless endangerment? Um, he's lucky to be alive. He's lucky to be unharmed and not being charged with any crimes for having assaulted uh, Kyle. So the kid, you know, he just blindly shot at him. You know, I, I, I again, I think it should have been a different charge. So, and then uh, Tony, <clears throat> Tony's charge, or the charge regarding Tony was really, really particu particularly stupid. There's no way he could prove it, that he was trying to kill Tony. The duration of the event was so ridiculously short. And Kyle was so triggered by what had happened to him just prior to Tony attacking him and then being hit with a skateboard. That certainly did not help. It just raised the level of his panic. So he shot. Now, if you think about it, Tony had grabbed the end of his gun, which means that the gun was aimed at Tony because Tony was pulling it toward himself. When you pull the barrel of a gun toward yourself and somebody's got their finger on the trigger, you're guaranteed to get shot. In most cases, especially when you're dealing with a scared kid. Um, so yeah, so a, again, different charge, and and the the charge about Gage, it was stupid. 
It was utterly the stupidest charge that they levied against him. I mean, Gage had approached him with a gun in his hand, and Kyle aimed his rifle at him, at which point Gage backed up and put his hands up, and as soon as Kyle dropped his hand, uh, or his, his rifle, Gage started approaching him with his gun pointed at Kyle. You can see it in multiple videos that this was the case. So, of course, Kyle shot at him. He was totally triggered. What did Gage think? I mean, was he, is Gage an idiot that he thought that Kyle was just going to just say, oh, yeah, okay, you're approaching me with the gun, no problem. I'm going to let you do that. Duh, no, hello. Just such a stupid charge. So, and, and, and let's come, let's, Okay, since a lot of people have framed this as a um, an example of white privilege and also as an as an example of white supremacy, which I've seen no proof of Kyle being involved in white supremacy, um, but and and well, I welcome anybody to share with me actual proof, not al not not false al or allegations or not not just oh this person said that person said no. I want to see actual proof. If you haven't got proof. Just don't say anything. But if you've got some proof to share with me, I'd love to see it. Because I, nobody has provided proof that Kyle was a white supremacist. Um, so let's compare this case. Since it's all about, it's been trumped up as being about blacks, um, let's compare this to the case of Hakeem Littleton. Now, Hakeem was with his friend. His, there was a warrant out on his friend. When the police came, his friend just gave up. Hakeem, as he was being approached by a police officer, Decided, oh no, I'm not going for that. So he pulls a pistol out of his gun, tries to shoot the police officer in the head. And then that police officer manages to not get shot, and he tackles Hakeem to the ground. Hakeem twists his body and continues to fire at other police officers and gets killed in the process. Hello? Was that police brutality? No. Did Hakeem bring it on himself? Absolutely. Absolutely. He was posing a serious, fatal threat to multiple police officers. Now, could they possibly have resolved it? I don't know. I really got to wonder what was going on with, with Hakeem that we don't know about. Either because of the re maybe he had a relationship with that cop, or maybe something the cop, the cop said to him, or maybe he was on, all drugged up or something. I just don't know. So... If he'd been taken to court, would he have um, gotten off if the charges had been wrong? Okay, so this is a little bit more of a difficult question um, because I know there is bias in, in many people regarding race. But, you know, I'm just thinking from my own heart, if Hakim had been charged incorrectly like Kyle was. I wouldn't have been able to find him guilty of the incorrect charges unless I didn't understand what those charges meant, really. Um, but, so, he, it's just insane. If you think about um, these five charges and you go back and you try to discover charges that would have been more appropriate, and they could have charged him with other things. They could have charged him with, I think he lied to the reporter and relied to, uh, he lied to somebody else. I'm not sure if he lied to the police about his age and his EMT status, but he should have, if that was the case, he should have been charged with that too. Um, and then there's also the culpability of the police for not checking his ID um, and so on and so forth. But the five charges basically made it impossible for the jury to find him guilty. And... I don't know if there was, um, I don't know what the, what went on with the jury. I don't know if there was some debate about whether to, to use a different charge or not. Um, I haven't looked into that. But if you, it just really doesn't make sense. Now, I just want to remind you that when you put an animal in a situation where it fears for its life, and we're animals, like it or not, I know some of you don't want to believe it, then that's just tough. Reality is, is we behave like other animals when we're scared enough. Animals will freeze, they'll flee, or they'll fight. And if you watch the videos, you'll see that Kyle first tried to flee. He did 
And then when he felt trapped between Joe and the crowd of people on the other side of the parking lot, he froze and then he immediately went into fight mode and he shot Joe. And if we look at the case where he shot Anthony and Gage, he really was in a position where he couldn't effectively flee um, because he felt surrounded by assailants, uh, most likely, and he was on the ground. And he, he had a guy with a gun right next to him. So um, he resorted to the only thing that he could do, because freezing, well, some people would freeze, actually. Some people would freeze in that situation. It's just like you're, you know, you're learning to ride a bicycle and there's this big pothole in the middle of the road you're riding on and instead of riding around it as an experienced bicyclist would you just freeze you're holding on to the handlebars as hard as you can trying to turn them but they won't turn because you can't move your muscles because you're not in control so he fired he shot and that's an animal response. Now, a lot of people will claim that they know what was in Kyle's mind. I don't pretend to know what was in Kyle's mind. I'm just talking about what I know about psychology and, and how people be, react in a, a fearful situation. But people will claim, no, 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 this was premeditated. Well, you know what? Um, to In order for it to be premeditated... You have to have planned out what you're going to execute. So if you just go out with a vague notion of, you know, I'm really pissed off at some of these people because they're destroying businesses and attacking people or whatever. I'd really like to just shoot one of them. That's not premeditation. Okay? That's just stupid mouthing off. It's not premeditation. But if you if he went into it knowing, I'm going to shoot Joe, I'm going to shoot Tony, and or I'm going to shoot Gage... And then he just had to figure out a way to engage with them to the point that they wanted to attack him so that he could shoot them. Well, that would be premeditated. But did he know any of them? How was he... How, I mean, how... It's not implausible that that could be done, but it's highly unlikely. Okay, I mean, it just doesn't really work out. So, and I, I want to make it absolutely clear here, okay? In cases where police walk away from a crime they have committed in the line of duty based on the qualified immunity rule for uh, police officers and other federal officers. Um, I don't agree with that. I mean, yes, there are some situations where it is uh, valid, but there are several situations that have occurred where police got off scot-free um, having committed murder. And that's what really upsets people. Um, and I understand why that rule is in place. It's because police otherwise are going to be so fearful of shooting anybody, they're going to get shot a lot. Um, they won't, they're hobbled, so to speak. They're, um, their hands are tied if they feel like they can't take a shot without risking going to jail. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. Either police have the ability under in the line of duty to fire at somebody who's who's threatening their lives um, so that they can they can take the best course of action hopefully um, or they are not allowed to do that unless the situation is crystal clear we're going to lose a lot of police and there are some police out there that we wouldn't mind losing um, but if you if you just try to put it in the perspective of we need to allow the police to do their job and we understand that just like every one of the rest of us the police will make mistakes and some police are, are evil um, it's 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 just becomes a complicated question but still I think that there have been police who have gotten off and when they should have been prosecuted. Um, and I hope that something is done about that. I certainly um, am not um, opposed to a movement to clean up the courts 
and the police so that uh, racism ceases, ceases to become an issue. Um, but at the same time, um, I don't think it's right to make Kyle a poster boy for it. Um, and also I realize that human nature being what it is, you know, I'm, I, I like to be a good person and maybe you do too, but maybe you're one of those people who doesn't, maybe you're one of those people who enjoys doing bad things. Um, or you do it because you need to get money. So human nature being what it is, we're always going to have these problems no matter, as long as there are people in control, as long as the human element is not removed from the situation, the problems will continue to exist. So, um, sorry, thank you very much for watching and hope you have a great day.